Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. First of all, I want to apologise. There's one or two people leaving some comments that's not getting through on the respective pages. I've got no control over this whatsoever. It's obviously something to do with YouTube, maybe a glitch in their software or some wording used in it they don't like for some reason. Uh, even though I'm getting notified these comments, I can see the comment, I just can't see the put it on the page, I can't give a thumbs up, I can't do anything like that. It's not because I'm deleting any of these comments, I don't delete comments, but I do if someone obviously being rude to someone else or swearing or you know coming out and saying you know, not right kind of thing, if you know what I mean. But as with my reviews, it's only my opinion. If I think you know the speaker's brilliant, you may think it's rubbish, you know what I mean? You're entitled to your opinion, I'm entitled to my opinion. Everyone hears everything differently, but um, it gives, you know, great, put that comment on there. If you think it's rubbish and I say it's good, or vice versa so that's great because other people can have a look and kind of judge for themselves or get more of an idea especially if like, lots of people say this is great it gives other people like new into this and they're thinking about buying something a bit more confidence maybe to go and get that out and if it's a bit of mix and match then they may kind of think oh i'll leave that one and go for something else i don't know but uh you know it's all there to help other people i know it's low budget and low prices but obviously not everyone's got big wage packets and big pockets to go and get out go and buy this top range stuff they may be working their way up etc it's all about budget stuff here. It gives them a reasonable, decent sound for what it is. I mean, it's not going to beat the top end hi fi, that's for certain. But anyway, today I want to talk about these uh, Wolfdale Diamond 3s. I nearly forgot where they were after all that. I bought these off of eBay. There's, there's many of the stuff I do get. If it's cheap and cheap posters or free posters or local pickup, then it's great because it's, it's giving me another review. It gives give me an idea what they sound like and give other people an idea what they sound like. And these were recommended by Ditton Works, so if you're into speakers and that, a link again, I keep plugging this channel, it's well worth a look, I, mean, I want people to go where people know what they're talking about, you know what I mean, so they've got a good idea what they're buying, and, and he's more upmarket as well, so you're spending even more money, so you want to get it right, like, you know what I mean, that's why I look at it, so let's get it right and get you some decent stuff, right, got these, these work fine, you know what I mean, in the advert, sound beautiful, all that kind of rig and roll you get with it, sometimes sound warm, sound beautiful, like sweet sound, and all that, you know, some people go over the top, to entice you into buy it, but obviously not going to entice me. These were cheap anyway. So I've got them and uh, set them up very quickly as I do when I get my speakers. I don't always get time to have a proper listen. Sometimes they're putting a cupboard for a while. I don't want to keep doing speaker, 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 but all of a sudden I bought a few speakers recently. So I'm trying to get them videos out of the way because they're taking up room. Then I can get onto something else, maybe repairing or amplifying or something else anyway. So I've got these, plugged them in, and I thought, well, they don't sound quite right. Something's wrong. And uh, going up listening to them and that, and uh, straight away putting your ear to it, and that I could tell that one of the tweeters has got me, one of the speakers. I thought, oh, one of the tweeters don't work. You know, these are supposed to be working fine, sound beautiful, and all that. Got a problem with the tweeter, so um, there's a few ways, obviously, to try and uh, work out, you know, what's wrong with it. You know, I mean, is it the crossover? Is it the actual tweeter itself got open circuit, you know, blown, etc.? So, one way you could easily do this is just to take this tweeter that's not working out and uh, get to your other speaker and take that tweeter out and just swap them over, wire them back in, swap them over and see if it works. You know, if it works, then you know that that tweeter you've just taken out is blown. So that's exactly what I did, you know what I mean? Quick, easy. Another way, you can use a meter, obviously, but not many people got a meter, you know what I mean? You can use a meter and test down, you know, the, the resistance across it. should be enough for short circuit, eight ohms, somewhere around there anyway. I could have done that, but I'm just saying for the general kind of person that hasn't got a meter, so, you know, it wasn't working, I thought it worked in the other one, so obviously something different there, you know what I mean, it's not the uh, tweeter, so I put the tweeter that was in this one into the other speaker, and lo and behold it worked, so I thought, well that's a good start, I've got two tweeters, and they're both working, but one of them don't work in this unit still, so something to do with the wiring, a part, capacitor, maybe a resistor, or something like that, the coil maybe going open circuit, something like that, that's stopping it getting to the tweeter part, so of course I've opened it up, and had a little look inside, and uh, it did take me long to find a dry joint on the resistor that's feeding this tweeter. So I'm going to show you a little video of me now, just mending that. Okay, hopefully you can see this uh, dry joint. It's uh, fairly easy to see anyway at the top here. You can see not much solder around the actual joint. There's another one down here that looks a bit like wary, so to speak, where there's not a lot of solder actually around the joint. So we may just give that one a little tap as well. But this is the main one. It's the resistor there going off to the tweeter, a three point, sorry, a three watt, two point two ohm resistor that works its way to the tweeter. So if we wiggle that, hopefully you're going to get uh, an idea of it actually moving. You may not be able to catch this on camera. So I'll do it slowly. And if you watch the gap between the board and the actual tip of that uh, end of the resistor there, the wire, you should see it get slightly bigger. 
and hopefully see it moving. Right, I've been a bit lazy here. I mean, normally you'll take that board out, um, disconnect the speakers, take the board right out. You could do it on your bench or somewhere a bit better than what I'm doing it. But uh, for today, I'm using one of these, hopefully you can see it, it's, a, it's a, like a, a Weller gun. It's quite a powerful one. I think it's about 100 watts. I mean, you only need a 15 or well, probably a 30 watt soldering iron on that. But this heats up really quick. And hopefully we're going to sort this out pretty quick because I'm actually testing these speakers out. So um, I want to give that a solder quickly. There you go. And I did mention this bottom one, so why am I just going to, without it all falling in there, this is, not, this is not what to do, so to speak. But like I say, I'm kind of rushing this a bit. Obviously put this on your bench or somewhere a bit better than what I've got it here all twiddling about everywhere with this gun. And that's done that one as well. So be careful I put that gun down. Or the missus are going to one where I've burnt the carpet yet again. What you can do to test out the tweeters working, now you should be out of here really, like just putting your ears to the speaker and moving it up and down between the uh, main drive and the tweeter. You should hear the top end coming out of the uh, tweeter and comparing it with the other speaker as well. But if they're both gone, they could well be both gone. You know, it's pretty unlikely, I suppose, but it can happen. And you're still not 100% certain. Another way without taking it apart and actually measuring, you know, meter. <coughs> this is the way I'd use, very quick way of seeing if the tweeter's working or not. Uh, obviously you can listen, but if you're still not certain, by putting your hand over it with a bright piece of music, you don't have to adjust the tone controls at all, leave them where they are, have them dead level, but you will be able to hear the difference on a bright piece of music. By putting your hand over the tweeter, it should make a difference, you know, that, that eye end should kind of like fade away, should be a little bit less louder and a bit more muffled kind of thing. If you're hearing no difference at all doing that, then obviously it's not working, like, you know what I mean, you've got a bright track playing, there should be some difference there. If there's no, no difference, you know, something's gone wrong. So what I'm going to do is play a bright bit of track, a bit of music, shall I say, not well, a bit of a track as well, and hopefully the microphone's going to pick it up and you'll hear the difference. Now, obviously, that you know this tweet is working, so there was a difference. I and mean, if you're doing that, no difference, then something is wrong. Just be careful. This dome tweeter is receding a bit, so I put it putting my hand over it. I'm not putting any pressure on the dome at all. If you've got one that's sticking out, protruding, then make a cup out of your hand, make a cup, and make you know seal it as much as possible. But you should hear a difference there just by going like that over it. So that's one way of testing the tweeter without actually taking the speaker apart. So of course, once I did the uh, repair, it worked fine. Now, I was pretty lucky there, really, because if it was the tweeter, not that these are expensive, these are about £10 on eBay, but it's an extra tenner you've got to go and fork out. And if you've got a dearer speaker, it could be 30 40 or £50. It could be, you know, depending how expensive the speaker is, really, and the parts for it. Sometimes they're not always easy to get hold of. They're quite rare, and with rarity comes a price premium. So that was working fine now. Going back to that crossover, it could have been a few parts in that board that gone. You could have had one of the coils, choke, whatever you want to call it, could have went open circuit. Now, if you wanted to test this, it, it, you know, I always take, you know, I've kind of got used to taking one part out, one, I say one part, one side out. So if you've got the choke, two wires, take one wire off the board, unsolder it, and you have to get yourself a little meter and measure the resistance, see if you know that's got any resistance in it or got an open circuit. Same with the resistor, and pretty much the same with the capacitor as well, just, you know, test you're getting some kind of resistance on the capacitor there. You get yourself a little capacitor meter or a little general kind of meter that does everything. They're not very expensive. Got a little, uh, display. I'll put one up on the screen, a little picture of this little meter here. They're not expensive, about 12 pound. And that measure resistors capacitors. It's only a cheap thing, but it does a good job. So um, maybe something to have handy. But in this case, it was the actual uh, resistor, a dry joint on the resistor. So all working lovely and fine. So I thought, well, back to normal now. I'll set them up again. And I played that little demo track with uh, five different sets of speakers. There's a link at the top to that. But I'm going to have to <laughs> own up here. I'm going you know, to tell the truth what's happened. We will make mistakes. I recorded that. And maybe the diamonds didn't come off maybe as favourably as they should have done in that actual uh, recording. I'll tell you why. I didn't know at the time. I only found this out when I thought, I'll, give, I'll start doing a review of these next. This will be my next speakers. I'll do a review of these. I've set them up. And I thought it doesn't sound right still, something's wrong. I'm in the tweeter, but something's still wrong. You know, the focus was 
well, it was out, there was no focus at all. I thought, is, is something wrong here? You know, so I thought, I was trying to think, well, what can that be like? It can't be this bad, surely. And what I found out by, well, it, it took me a little bit of time, which is a bit embarrassing, really, is I checked the connections on the back. Of course, red is positive. That's where the positive wire goes. And the black is the negative, so that's where that goes. And of course, I double checked on the amplifier, the positive is going to the positive, the negative is going to the negative, still doesn't sound right for what can it be? And I just turned them around together by complete fluke. And I see that someone, well, I worked out that someone had actually swapped these over. They took these completely off, these little screw terminals, and swapped them over. So I had one speaker where the positive was on this side, and the other speaker where the positive was on this side. So one of them was wrong. So of course, it didn't take too long, went on the internet. I mean, I could have measured it, I could have like tested it or whatever, but easy thing to do, just go on the internet and see some pictures of these, plenty of pictures about, so you're taking it all apart and testing and having a look where the wires go on the crossover, etc. Went on the internet very quickly, had a look, and uh, people have pictures of these and the back of these, everything. Check a few as well, just to make sure, and just to make sure you get these in the right position, because in the wrong position, obviously they're not gonna sound very good. So as you can see, this is in the wrong position. So this is how it was. So that's what's caused the focusing problem. So of course, and now I've swapped it back, I can do a proper review of these speakers. So that's it for this video. Just a little thing to be a bit wary when buying speakers off of eBay. Make sure the connections are right. Something you probably don't always look at. You don't you know, just so eager plugging in the wires. Just make sure someone ain't done a silly trick and swap these over, you know, and just be a bit wary when people say these speakers sound fine, they're brilliant and all that stuff. As long as some sound's coming out of it, I say, oh, that's good. Okay, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.